It is September 26th. It's officially fall and I'm going to take you on a fall garden tour. Uh, we still have so much left in the gardens that has to come out. So much that's still green, which it seems a shame to pull it out just because it's going to get cold. Uh, the, the weatherman, if you can trust him, has told us that we do have some decent weather coming for the next two weeks, but some of the stuff we just don't want to run the risk. Plus, we do have stuff that we want to get planted in some of these spots for uh, covering for fall and winter. We're starting off in our little garden beside the barn. This was our little 16 by 32 garden bed that we'd planted all of our Canada Crookneck squash in. And as you can see, these squash plants are still pumping it out. Still tons of blossoms. But I have a feeling that uh, the end is coming. Within the next two weeks, we are going to be harvesting these beauties. So in case you haven't seen it yet, Go back and check out our How Much Did We Grow on our Canada Crookneck competition. Uh, we'll link the video in whatever corner it comes in and also in the description below. So if you get to the end of the video, just go down to the description and uh, we'll have the link there to go to the Canada Crookneck competition. But basically, as we said before, Price is Right style, get your vote in on that particular video and let us know how much squash you think we're gonna harvest. Uh, like I said, I think uh, in the next two weeks or so, it's gonna have to all come up. Um, but definitely get your vote in on that. But on with our tour. So hidden amongst the Crookneck squash are potatoes planted in buckets. Those, hopefully we will get them out of there today or the next day. Video to come, I'm sure, on our potato bucket harvest. We did not grow as many in buckets this year because we went to in ground. And you can see here, this is just one of our potato patches, mixed in, of course, with a whole lot of weeds because that's how we like to garden here at Hickory Croft Farm. We're weed farmers. But everything is dyed back. We actually have some potatoes that are uh, exposed here. So... We need to get these up. These are our nice uh, all blues, so we want to make sure we don't lose these. But you can see over between chickens, look at this one. Holy cow. Yeah, definitely need to do some harvesting. Holy Hannah. That's a lot of potatoes sticking out of the ground. So we are finally, my canning mind says, getting to the end of tomatoes. These Scotia tomatoes and our San Marzanos and white Thomasols are about the only thing that's still kind of pumping it out. This garden has been an ongoing battle with the chickens. It was kind of thrown together quick this year. There's no fence. And as you can see, my cages have collapsed. A lot of uh, the tomatoes didn't actually even end up in cages. This was a very poorly done garden and we do hope to improve on that next year. But I think it's still produced an amazing amount of food. It's another sneak peek at our crookneck squash in here. Like I said before, they have crept all over this garden, so it's going to be really interesting. Chris and I have absolutely no idea how many we're going to get. These two little trellises here were the black valentine beans that Chris has pretty much all harvested and dried. We still have to get them out of their shells, but lots of time for that over the winter. And these are starting to really pump out our black Hungarian hot peppers. Wow. They look great. We're going to have quite a few off of these this fall too, which is awesome. Not sure what I'm going to do with them yet. Maybe make some hot sauce. And that's our white Thomasol patch. These produced amazing for us this year. Uh, this was our first time growing white Thomasol and uh, super pleased with them. Loved them for juice, tomato juice. And so we've decided next year we're actually going to grow more of these just for juice. The white Thomasol seeds were actually seeds that we got in the Canadian Seed Exchange this year. I believe they came from Wild Edibles and we're so pleased to have gotten the opportunity to try these. To be honest, Chris and I had gotten in a little bit of a rut. Not a rut, but just set in our ways, I guess you could say. Um, as I'm sure everybody's learned as they watch our channel. Um, we thought we had the tomatoes we wanted. So... It was really great doing that challenge and getting all these di different seeds and, you know, researching and getting the chance to try them because, boy, it opened our eyes to uh, the fact that there's some out there that definitely have their benefits. So, like I say, we're looking forward to uh, growing quite a few more of those white Thomasols next year. 
while on the subject of tomatoes, here we have the San Marzano patch. They are pumping it out still. Like I say, I bet you there's another 100 pounds at least just on these vines. Uh, next year we won't be growing quite as many of these, I don't think. Love them, but I've made a lot of product this year, so I imagine it will carry over. But very, very pleased. A few learning curves, which we will share in upcoming videos on what we've learned about some of these tomatoes and things we should have done. Squash again. Our winter squash needs probably to be harvested. We've got quite a few in here. I don't know if you can see it down there. And there's one over in there. And I know there's some over underneath the bunny hutches and they grew all around the back. All over there, you can see that vine went right out into the sheep pen. These grew like crazy in here. So again, we have no idea what's on them for fruit. It'll be a surprise for us as well. Harvesting sunflowers, you can see a lot of them have plopped over. These are our uh, Russian mammoth sunflowers. They're the striped ones and uh, they are ready to harvest. I'm very excited to make, uh, well, I call them, we call them spits. Are they called spits in everywhere in the world? I don't know. Anyways, that's a brand of the sunflower seeds you chew and get the shell off. Anyways, I'm very excited to roast and make some spits. The ongoing battle with the mint that we are not winning. I keep pulling it out, keep feeding it to rabbits. Actually, a wonderful viewer uh, made a suggestion on one of our rabbit videos of cutting it down and just hanging it in the loft or something to dry for winter to feed them. Never thought of that, but brilliant. So that is on the agenda for the upcoming weeks. As you can see behind me here, it is still growing incredibly. But uh, I think that's a good idea. While it's still in amazing shape to dry it for use, we've been uh, dehydrating it in the house and stuff like that for uh, teas and things over the winter, but you only need so much. So that's gonna be a great thing for the bunnies in the middle of winter to have that to snack on. Our totally sweet Italian peppers. Boy, oh boy, have these pumped it out this year. Those ones unfortunately did not get cages. We still have on these tons and tons of green peppers so yeah hopefully the weather holds for us and we can get these off they are tasty green as well so i'm not too worried about it but you can see just beautiful all the peppers on there i've been canning these peppers and we've been freezing preserving them we're gonna have peppers for the whole winter and here we have another row of peppers again just pumping it out in here Look at that one on the end, it's loaded. Amongst these weeds are the um, black-eyed peas. They're all drying out nicely there and need to be harvested. The weeds had to be left because they actually vined onto the weeds. You can see here the vines growing all up and around it. So we didn't want to pull everything out and uh, take away their trellis system, so to speak. But it's time, those beans look ready to go. Oh, the beets, the beets. They're still in the garden. I do want to make some beets, but we've kind of started feeding them to the animals. Another plant in the garden that is pumping it out this fall is our pink tongue eggplants. I'm gonna try and do this without shading it. They are just covered in fruit. And tons of flowers, tons more coming. I'm, to be honest, I'm running out of things to do with the eggplant. Look at that beauty right there. And we've got a couple on here that are for seed. We actually had 38 plants. They did nothing all summer. And now I'm overran with eggplants. So there's another, oh, that's a curly whirly one there. He's gonna have to come out. But there's nothing wrong with having food. And then along this edge of this garden, kind of to wrap it up, is the rest of our mammoth sunflowers. You can see here, they are ready to come out. So we need to get these before the uh, chickadees do. I've noticed chickadees on a few of the uh, sunflowers, kind of trying to pick at them. So that's how we know they're getting ripe. Once again, it's my starving cat. Yeah. Are you starving again? You look starving. 
Eh? Emmy apparently likes to steal the limelight and uh, complain on camera. Yeah, you like to make us look bad? You're silly. Oh. He's a new garden cat. You're the new garden cat. Yeah. He'll probably talk through the rest of the video. But yes, sunflowers, lots of them. We're going to have tons of sunflower seeds, which is fantastic. My eggplants have actually collapsed over my path. That one here is just loaded with them. Look at that. One down there, there. There's two there. Oh boy, and a whole bunch. I don't know if you can see them in there. We have lots of eggplant. We have a few of our Palestinians still trying to hold strong. There's not much left on those, but we're going to kind of gather up what we've got. But I think the pride and joy of my garden this year, well, maybe not. There's been a lot of good things in the garden this year. But the noodle beans have been amazing. We've harvested so many beans. Uh, we do look like we need to harvest again here. Some of these have gotten ahead of us. But, oh no, it's still good. Looked a little big, but he's still... I always gauge it on if they're... If, if the skin is still tight to the beans, then you're still good. But once it gets a little bit loose, like this one here on those big ones, the skin is loose. So that one's gone too far to really harvest for eating. And these don't make dry beans, so really after this point we're only harvesting for seed. You can see this one here, we've actually left it to go to seed and it's done amazing. So we just need a few to dry out a bit more. Here, a great example. These guys here we've left for seed. They're, due, they're, they're pretty much ready. We probably should pick them out of here before it does rain again. There's another nice one. The wonderful thing about these is you only need like 10 or 20 beans to make a meal. And they are very pretty. As much as I'd like to do a second arch to make a really long tunnel, I don't think we would need that many beans. And as we walk through our tunnel to look at our raised beds, once again, a jungle of green. And it is so hard to kind of start pulling this out because it's still producing like crazy. But at the same time, we know that that cold is gonna come. From over here, look at the cherry tomato trellis. It's crazy. It's so full of cherry tomatoes. We've uh, got a plan for some of them, which will come in a video up ahead here. Uh, a great idea that came from North Shore Preparedness. So uh, we are gonna do a video on that, hopefully this week, because they need to be harvested. But we'll take you over there in a second. The yellow crookneck summer squash is still producing, um, not as abundant, but there's still some coming. The uh, dwarf kale, which isn't so dwarf. Again, this has just been going and going. The one thing I love about this kale is, and I think all kales probably do this, I just don't have experience with a lot of them, but um, as we're picking it, it then puts out a new side shoot, which then grows a whole nother plant with nice young kales, which we kind of prefer the young stuff. The, um, the bigger, older stuff we're just feeding to the bunnies and then we tend to eat the younger little stuff. So. Uh, it works great on all aspects because you get an animal fodder food and then it pumps out some nice little stuff. Let's go in. Let's go into the cherry tomato cave. As I sneak in, oh boy. You can see underneath here. Look at those cherry tomatoes. And of course my cat. Like I said, we have a lot to pick in here. I'm betting that there is at least five pounds of cherry tomatoes, if not more, on these vines. These are the Gray's Sweet Cherry Tomatoes and certainly would recommend them to anybody. You don't need to plant a fall planting. These just keep going and going and going. I've actually had to keep cutting a little opening here so that I can get through. Another thing that is hidden down here, we planted these for fall lettuce. This is some butter crunch lettuce and it's not doing so well because of the shade from the cherry tomatoes. But I think uh, as we get some of this pulled back and out of here, they'll, they'll bounce back, I'm sure. The other side of the trellis. If anybody else has any recipes or great suggestions for cherry tomatoes, please let us know because we're running out of ways to use these. I'll put my hand up here just to give an example of the size. They're just, they're such cute, nice little, I'm going to just eat that one. 
Mm, mm. Some of them are starting to get a little overripe, but all in all, not bad. This is a funny bed. This was the cabbage and the kale, the red Russian kale, that we had saved for seed from last year. We let it go to seed this year, collected thousands and thousands of seeds off of it. Well, again, with this kale, it just keeps producing little baby kales from all the side branches. And it has been delicious. We've been eating salad off of it all summer. It just keeps producing and producing this red Russian. So we are so impressed with this. We're actually gonna cover it again and see what happens. What I'm a little worried of is if we chop this back down for winter, whether that's going to kill it. Cause you can see the stalks are, you know, they're very woody at the bottom. All the green growth is up higher. And I'm not sure how to tackle this if we do want to keep it for winter. So again, if anybody has information on that or a suggestion of how we could uh, potentially keep this alive and going, that would be fantastic. You can see here, we've got some more going to seed late seeds and our cabbage we've just been harvesting this as greenery to use in stir fries things like that uh, we did have them trying to develop cabbage heads you can see here i think i put that in another garden tour video but they didn't really do very much only had one develop into an actual head here and he's not very big you can see but i am going to pick that sooner rather than later to uh, at least make a little uh, thing of sauerkraut or something like that I'm also wondering, I think I could probably use some of the green leaves for sauerkraut because now we're at the time of year where the bugs aren't bad. So thinking to give it a try anyways. Continuing on in the raised beds, we have our next batch of uh, butter crunch lettuce all going to seed. We harvested and harvested off this all summer. Just, I can't say enough good about the butter crunch lettuce. It is amazing. This is going to become one of our top lettuces to grow, I think. Kind of a new experiment I'm trying with this. This is my arugula. This year I did arugula on this side and I did spinach over on that side. I've never been successful with spinach. We did harvest it this year. It was the best year we'd had so far, but it still didn't do fantastic. So my plan is to just kind of leave this. As you can see, I'm just piling it on top and the seeds drop. I've collected some seeds so that I have them in case it doesn't work, but I'm kind of just hoping that it's just going to keep reseeding itself. You can see like there uh, is a really nice arugula plant that I've been harvesting off that it seeded itself after the spring arugula. So I'm going to just leave it and see what happens for next year in the spring and come back and watch it. The blue barrel gardens are doing great. Mostly they're herbs. We've got our stevia, which we've been harvesting quite a bit off. We need to get some and save them for slips for starting new ones over the winter in the house. Parsley, whole parsley. Parsley, parsley, parsley. <laughs> the parsley was kind of a funny story. First we bought one pack of already started parsley from the store because we've not had great success growing parsley from seed. And so we got that and we planted it. Great. We did one blue barrel with that. Then we planted one blue barrel with the cornstarch method for the seeds and kind of left it for a little while hoping that it would germinate and go. And basically we waited and we waited and we waited and nothing happened. So we left it alone. We actually planted some onions in the tub and we bought another pack of stuff already growing because at that point it was too late to try and start something from seed. Well, wouldn't you know, the seed stuff did come up. So now we have a lot of parsley. So anyways, I'm drying parsley like crazy, but that's okay because we do use a lot of it. So it's handy to have. And you know what, once it's dried, it'll keep for a long time. So it just means we have to grow less of it next year. The rest of the sweet potatoes. I believe these may be coming out today. We want to see what's underneath that. As you can see, the greenery went down the side, across the thingy, and I've been pruning this path for feeding to rabbits most of the summer, um, rather than walking on them and wasting it. So uh, we'll see what they've got going on. More sugar beets down the end, Swiss chard. Last bit in our uh, garden here by the barn is our sugar beet patch. Again, this is doing incredible this year. Some, some have done less than others, but I think we're going to have quite significant uh, beet bottoms out of these. Sort of similar to the squash. We really haven't checked this to see what we're looking at, but I'm really hoping some of these big plants here produce some really nice beets for uh, making sugar and syrup this year. So this is just kind of a little look at where our garden is going. This here is that section of the garden that we talked about in our 
video, I guess two days ago, on how much do we actually garden. This is the garden behind that we want to expand uh, and take up this whole space that was the horse pen. Now, right now, I'm just gonna show you because we have a lot to work with and we didn't show this in the video the other day. This is also <laughs> my rabbit feeding grounds. Look at the burdock. You can actually see, I don't know if you can, right there is a squash vine. Right there is a squash vine growing up and over the burrs. And all down there, the burrs have all dried out. I have to go and cut those out before they drop their burrs. But this is why we have a lot of burdock to feed our animals. But I just wanted to show, right now we have done from in front of the barn to the back corner of this building here as garden. You can see our red cranberry beans are growing up, trellises there, and the squash is starting to creep out. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're crazy or not, but hopefully we can get this uh, going and done. I'm not saying that we're going to expand to this whole size next year. Uh, we definitely felt the pressure of building the two new gardens this year that really kind of pushed us uh, as far as getting things planted on time, seed development, all that sort of stuff. And so I definitely think it's going to be what we can get cleared out this fall so that we've got it ready come spring. Uh, it may only be doubling up to the back of that chicken coop that I showed and not developing the stuff further back behind me. But the long run game plan is that this whole strip here is going to be developed into garden. All big pipe dreams, but hey, you got a dream. All right, it's a test. Can you spot the squash? vine in all the burrs <laughs> just kidding it is crazy though so we are all the way out to here with our squash this is actually our uh oh chris is gonna have to tell me what it is and i'll write it in but it's uh some type of striped squash you can see there that one's gotten damaged that sucks because that's a really really nice one it would have kept well but uh we'll have to use that for pumpkin pie i guess yes we this is why machines and us don't agree that is our rototiller we will say no more. This is our second round of sugar beets that we planted in ground. Again, quite behind. There is, I don't know if you can see it in there. There is a bit of a beet on there. So they will still harvest and produce, but these are a lot smaller than the ones in the other garden. We have a lot of weeds. We are amazing weed farmers. I mean, if you could make a living farming weeds, we would be rich, but Alas, you can't. And I know people say you can't eat the grass, but half the time you can't eat the weeds either. So nothing really wants to eat the weeds. That's the problem. <laughs> Down here, and again, probably should have been trellised. We have our Canadian soup peas. And there are peas on them. They haven't developed well. Again, we were really behind getting this planted. Then we didn't water it, we didn't care for it, and it's going to be what it is. Basically, we're kind of hoping to get enough for at least seeds to plant for next year. They're still blossoming now, and there are some that are really good, but these are a dry pea. So we will have to kind of come back to this and see if they dry enough to actually harvest. Another experiment that has gone awry. You can see there's some carrots creeping in here. I don't know. We Oh, they do have pretty decent heads on them. So we might get a few carrots. Mostly I think they're probably gonna be saved for seed again. We just have to get organized. That's our problem, organization. But what we have here is our chickpeas. This was another experiment. Uh, Chris will probably come back to this with a video because I don't know a whole lot about it. This is his baby, but they actually produce chickpeas. I don't know if they're going to dry in time. I do think there was some dry ones on here and then we had a storm the other night and I think they may have fallen off. Let me just see if I can show you. See in here, there's, see like that guy there is almost dry. So he will get some chickpeas off this. It'll be interesting. He may just save them for seed, I don't know. Something that has done well this year that Chris is super proud of is this. Is soy grum. 
Lots of seed pods coming up there. So this will be interesting. We're hoping this was again an experiment. We planted this soy germ. It was old seed. We were just going to see how it did. And it did not too bad. So uh, fingers crossed those will actually have enough time to develop and dry for the seed. And we'll be able to save for planting next year and then be able to do grain for grinding for breads and pastas and stuff. Um, that's the hopes anyways. And then you also have a lot of animal feed with all the stock and everything. So again, We've been doing a lot of experiments this year. I'm going to give you a quick peek at all the burrs that are in the area that we need to develop for next year. Look at that. Crazy! All burrs. Look at that. We have a lot of cleanup to do. So we have our work cut out for us. Wish us luck on that. Oh look at there's a seed head down here on this soy grum that's fallen. Just so you can see where it's at. So I would say if we've got another two weeks of decent weather, we're going to get a lot of seed from those. So next is potatoes. And as you can see again, they're sticking up. I think it's just we did the hay covering and the hay has rotted down. And look at them all sticking up. So we've got to get these out. I believe there's six rows of russet potatoes that you can see dying back here. And then we have a couple rows right next to the beans there that are fingerlings. And on the other side, we've got our Yukon Gold, which I'd already harvested a couple from for eating. But uh, it is time for them to definitely come out because uh, I'll take you over there. As you can see here, the Yukon Gold. What Yukon Gold? These have died back completely. It's time for them to come up. You can see, unfortunately, we've got exposed potatoes kind of everywhere. So... We have to get in here and get these uh, dug up. And last, but certainly not least, was one of my experiments. Um, I love baked beans. That is my go-to. My goal in life is to be able to make my own baked beans and can them. And so we bought navy beans, which is what I usually use from the store to uh, make baked beans. And we bought them and we just planted them. Video is to come, but I'll give you a sneak peek at uh, what we have here. So in amongst all these weeds, is navy beans. So super excited to see what we get from this uh, set of plants here. Oh, what do you guys want? Oh, apparently these guys are as hard done by as my cat. Oh, there you are. Hi, Ginger. Hi, you guys. Hey, you guys. Cute little piggies. Enough of this uh, giving tours. It's time to actually get some work done and get some of this stuff harvested and out of here. Uh, but stay tuned, because we're definitely going to make sure that you stick along for the ride.